Hey folks, this is Paul talking about a course in miracles. The authority problem today. What is the authority problem? Why do you have issues with authorities? <clears throat> what does it mean to be authored, to author, to create? Who is the authority and who has authority over who? And if you have an authority problem, what's that going to be like? What's that going to mean? And, and how does it affect you? Uh, Jesus says, the issue of authority is really a question of authorship. Um, there's a section called Judgment and the Authority Problem, where he's talking about this quite a lot. Uh, so God is the authority. God is the first cause, the creator, your father, the source of everything that lives, and the starting point of reality. Um, he is the author, the one who has the authority, the ability to author, the power to author, uh, everything that exists, creation that's real. So. You, as God's son or child, have been authored by God. God is the writer of what you are. He's the one who designs you. He's the one that defines you. He uh, gets to choose to create you to be the way he wants you to be. Um, you don't have any say in this because you didn't exist before you were authored by him. And there's no other authors of you. So God is the only cause of you. He's the only author of you. He sat there and he thought, hmm, what shall I create this time? Let's create a Paul, let's create a Jim and a Sarah and a whatever. And authored by his will, according to his choice, his decision, his, his, his uh, nature, his desire to be joyful in creating, he put you in place. He created you and specified exactly what you will be and what you are and how you will function and what you're capable of and what you're not capable of and what your nature is and what's your identity and what is your sense itself what are you able to do how 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 limited are you or unlimited are you god is the sole source of what you are god shared everything of himself with you and therefore being a creation like god you could only be what he decides you are and you can only be as he created you to be so you inherit everything that you are from him he is your parent he is your creator um, so this is your inheritance is the fact that god is the cause of you and you are the effect of god now being an effect in this world usually means a dead end it usually means you cause something it produces an effect and the effect just kind of sits there and doesn't cause anything. Um, but in heaven, even though you are an effect of God, part of how God created you is that he shared his power, his causality, his creatorship, his author, authoring ability with you in your creation. So he didn't just create you as a dead end. You're not just an effect of God. You are an effect of God that is also able to author. And he gave his authority to you. And he gave you his power to create and his ability to create. Establishing you as a co-creator. So now you have been forced to be, by God's will alone, what you really are. You have no say in this whatsoever. <laughs> and part of that um, specification of what you are and what you're able to do 
is what he has designed you to be able to do so now he he authored you he designed you he put you in place he built you from the ground up and caused you to be everything that you really are and fortunately he created you to be um, loved and safe and powerful and creative and joyful and happy and at peace and invulnerable and immortal so fortunately God is good and has created you perfect and divine and holy and you couldn't have been created any better so there are no flaws in you there is no imperfections there's no malfunctions there's no potential to sin there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing that you can do to sin uh, you're permanently innocent because he wills that you be that so you are kind of like you're kind of like constantly being broadcasted by God he is the one who is making you exist and he's putting you in place as he wants you to be and gives you a function and your role and your identity and your nature and you don't have anything to do with this he is the author of you and in turn he has granted you certain abilities one of which is to be an author and you can therefore create and you can extend his creation you can create like him you can create with him and so now you also have authored creations you have creations of your own so the children of God have had children and now God has grandchildren and this is all perfectly divine and normal and natural and holy and everything's at peace and everybody's cooperative and everybody's on the same page <clears throat> fulfilling the function just being as God created you and in your natural state you are completely grateful to God for having created you and your brothers to be perfect and to be permanently happy and permanently safe and free from death and immortal and joyful and capable of creating and extending the kingdom and so in reality you are perfectly accepting of your role and your function your status your <laughs> position in the kingdom the uh, the purpose that you serve which is to co-create with him and you don't have any issue with it <laughs> you you accept that you are as God created you you're glad that you are as God created you you want to be only as God created you and you acknowledge that you have nothing other than what he has decided that you have you are nothing other than what he wills you to be and you're totally fine with it you accept it you acknowledge it as there is no better uh, definition of the self that you could be there is no type of being there is an improvement on what God could create you to be like so you are this amazing magnificent and beautiful being of light uh, that is flawless and perfect and cannot be improved upon and everything that you create is that way too so God God is this author of you and in, in your natural position in heaven you can only be what he wants you to be so his will you cannot go against his will you cannot create yourself you can't define yourself you can't make yourself be different you can't change yourself you can't affect yourself you can't damage what God is creating you can't redefine your nature you can't give yourself abilities that you don't have you can't do things that God did not allow you to be capable of doing so you are just having to accept at some point that you uh, are happy to just be the way God created you to be and that you're not 
interested in being his father or his equal or his uh, able to overthrow his kingdom or rebel against him or whatever else so your proper place is to be a child of God not to be God the first primary cause creator of you you did not create yourself and you did not create God but God created the king the sonship and you were created to add to the sonship but you do not have the ability or the power to cause God or create God or be above him or be at necessarily the same level as him as such because he does have the ability to create you and you don't have the ability to create him so in that respect you don't quite have the same function so your position is that you're supposed to be happy to be a child of God to have a parent that God is your father or mother and that's normal and it's natural and you are okay with it <laughs> And that's how you were created to be. You were created to be this particular piece of the kingdom. And when you try to usurp your function and usurp the power of God or go above and beyond what you were designed to be, you start getting these notions of specialness and wanting to be having special favor and wanting to be something God didn't create wanting to be different, wanting to be unique and special or selfish, um, that's when you start going into ego. You start developing a problem with the authority of God. <laughs> so, so now you start to question authority. You start to undermine authority and you start trying to assume an authority that you don't have that you are somehow equipped with the ability to overthrow or have more power than God has or to have a power that he didn't give you that you got from somewhere else that's just yours that you can now use to have power to cause him and his creations that you can attack reality that you can sin and therefore you can have the power to not only change him and his creations but that you can change yourself in the belief that you can somehow redefine what you are and you can choose a different world and you can have a different nature and you can change your identity your sense of who am I and what am I and what am I able to do what kind and so then you start developing this this belief that you have an authority um, to author God that you are God and that you have this authority this power over him and now you reject his authority you don't like this idea that you have this creator that that is the only one who gets to decide what you are you're not comfortable with it so you, you start getting like oh, I, I want to define myself I want to be the one that chooses what I am I want to reinvent myself I want to be able to do things that God says I can't do <laughs> and, which is terribly naughty and so you start developing an attitude <laughs> you start to reject authority and start having this power struggle and this becomes the rebellion which is the fall of man where you're re rebelling against God and his nature and his creation against yourself it's the denial of yourself and the denial of who and what you are as God created you and the desire to be something that you're not the desire not to be yourself the desire not to have been authored by God and that means the desire that your authorship is anonymous that you don't have a father you don't have a creator you don't you didn't come from somewhere you invented yourself <laughs> and 
you made yourself and you get to decide what's true of you and what isn't and you get to define yourself and you get to just explore what you are and design who and what you are you get to invent your identity you get to write a big long list of all the properties of what you are and what makes you yourself in order to replace his authorship and to have this belief that you don't have a creator therefore <laughs> you haven't been really created and this starts leading to the belief that you don't exist because you're denying yourself you're denying what God created you to be you're denying your soul and so you're saying I'm not that self I'm not me I'm not this thing God created I'm something else but because that entails the belief that you <laughs> didn't have a father you invent a new father the ego invents a false God to replace God to to try to justify and explain where you came from you make up your own father which is this false God which is the opposite of God and it's the idea of this evil monstrous vengeful hateful God who's out to get you and he has a wrath that you have to run away and hide in, in dead bodies from and this is largely the God of the Bible in many places for example this judgmental sends you to hell God <laughs> is the ego's projection of its idea of what God must be like having rejected God's real nature and wanting to replace God as the authority over you and so now th this egotism turns into not only doubts about whether you exist attempts to get rid of yourself it also becomes this this state of being orphaned and alone not having a parent and then inventing this idea that you are under under the rulership of some other power some other authority that you were caused by either yourself which is crazy circular logic or by this alien will this superpower this false god who you now worship as your idol and now it's kind of like what I realize is it's like all the ways that you were relating to God where you were under his authority and you were created by him and you were happy with that and therefore you had awe of him and he had power over you technically um, not that he would ever forcibly do anything to you against your will because that would be going against his will because you are his will um, you took that that relationship and you displaced the function of God you took God out of the picture and replaced him with a false God but maintained the relationship so that now <laughs> you now think that you were created by the ego you think the ego is your father you think that the ego is the cause of you it has power over you it's the authority over you you think that the ego defines what you are that it wills against you that it gets to decide and define what's true of you you listen to it and trust it and have faith in it like you believe that it's your father and that it's telling you what you are and what your nature is and that you should listen to it and you should just accept it and now you think that you are inheriting from the ego that you are a child of the devil <laughs> and that you you've um, you've now assigned power and authority to the ego as this false god and now you think that you are under the power of this tyrannical rulership which is this false god that you're projecting this idea of god and so now this is how you give your power away to the ego because you you used to recognize that god was all-powerful 
and he gave his power to you sharing his power with you making you all powerful as the course says I am not afraid but all powerful I'm not, I'm not weak but strong um, God is my strength you took this idea of what is what has power and where does your power come from and that you share your power with your creator and now you've decided that you're not created by God you're created by nothingness and by the ego so now you think the ego is the one that has the power over you and that you're caused by the ego and you get your power from the ego you share the ego's power it makes you stronger <laughs> except it makes you weaker so <laughs> it's interesting you get into this situation where you now have an authority problem you have a big problem with authority it's, a, it's the whole ego thing is about this rejection of God as your father and you don't want to be a child of God you want to be separate you want to be having autonomy and authority over your own life and have no place in your life where you allow God to decide for you where you have nowhere that you that you allow God to give you anything you don't let him give you power you don't let him give you happiness you don't let him give you love and you think that in your having authority rejecting everything that God would give you that you're better off and uh, even being non-existent and having no existence because you don't have a parent <laughs> you would be better off you'd be better off dead basically this is this authority problem is the rejection of your eternal life and your immortality is the rejection of the fact that God sustains you at all times and God causes you at all times he broadcasts you permanently he maintains you as a fixed constant permanent creation in his mind forever there's a beautiful thing in the course about how you're like this star in the in the highest skies of heaven that is permanent and fixed and it's so far removed from the earth that you barely even know that it's there because um, God has placed you as like a permanent brilliant light that can never be changed and so ego and authority issues are all, this is the whole ego thought system is all about this power struggle of authority against God and who has authority over you and how dare they try to tell you what to do those motherfuckers ah there's my first swear word <laughs> and, and so we have issues with accepting again or reclaiming our inheritance or allowing God to be the cause of us receiving anything from God letting God choose for you letting God have power to operate through you acknowledging that your false God doesn't exist we've got a problem with this <laughs> it's a big problem <clears throat> so when someone has a big authority problem it shows up as having a having a lot of issue with accepting authority from anyone or anything wanting to be the authority to the exclusion of God not accepting that anything is true unless it gets run by you first run by your filters and your approval list and your decision making and you being the one that plays God so that you get to decide is this approved or is it rejected and so you see <clears throat> you'll have people that um, who have a big authority problem will be highly over independent and will not have trust of God and will not have room in their life for God to do anything they won't um, step aside and let themselves be host to God this is a big thing in the course that you are either 
uh, the host of God himself. God is, in, in, in creating you, he put himself in you. You are a piece of him. You are made of God. You are part of God. God is in you. You host him at your inner altar. And therefore, God is in you permanently. You are permanently a host of God. His power, his mind, his will are forever embedded in your being. And you extend and use these things in your co-creating, in your power, and your willing, and your creating children, children of your will. And so when you reject all that and you don't want it, and you become this very cut off, isolated person who might look like they're very, they have everything together and they're running their whole lives and they're being a Karen. <laughs> or, they're, or they're like uh, in control, in charge, seeming to be authoritative, seeming to be confident, seeming to be um, powerful in positions of power. Of course, the ego's power is always about overthrowing power and taking power away from others by forcing them against their will. That is not how God's power works. Um, so when you don't have any room in your existence and in your life for God's authority, for being a child of God, recognizing yourself as a child of God, letting yourself be caused by Him, letting yourself be helped by Him, receiving guidance from Him, um, being healed by Him. Now God has appointed the Holy Spirit to be the only therapist, and He's the one who is supposed to be there helping you and healing you correcting your mind, undoing your twisted thoughts and your egotism and your authority problem if you are offering a little willingness. But a lot of people I think that are doing the course or any spiritual thing, because of their authority problem, they are not really willing to look at the fact that the Holy Spirit has a function and he's supposed to be fulfilling the function of sort of standing in for God, having authority and power, the ability to heal you. And he sort of represents the transfer between God and you. He's sort of like the channel through which um, you receive from God. Um, God's power to heal, God's will to be done, God's uh, love to be extended, God's mind, etc. And so, if you don't let the Holy Spirit do His function in salvation, you're kind of doing the course by yourself, and you're kind of like um, trying to figure it out by yourself, and you're trying to heal yourself, and you're trying to have the right thoughts by yourself, and study it on your own. We're supposed to be undoing the authority problem that we have, which means letting go of control, <laughs> letting go of this position of playing God, developing trust in the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to do for you what you keep trying to do by yourself, admitting that if you trust in your own strength, you will be afraid because you don't have a separate power that is strong enough to deal with anything. So you need God and making room for God in your life by allowing the Holy Spirit to fulfill his function in the atonement process where you're supposed to be willing to be forgiving and to admit to being mistaken, having authority problem, and being willing to surrender to his authority, putting aside your control and your fight and your war and your conflict that comes from you trying to have power of your own without him, 
and then making room for him allowing him he will undo the consequences of your wrong decision if you will let him so it's kind of like you need to show up and be at the front door of your mind with the Holy Spirit coming down the sidewalk wanting to enter but it can't just be that you're standing there looking at him and he's staying outside you have to because you're host to God you've got to get the Holy Spirit in you you've got to get God in you and recognize that you have an altar to God embedded in your soul and you need to have room in here for God to exist and to operate through you to be a miracle worker you've got to have the power of God in you and be willing to extend it so you can't do that if you're not willing to make space for God <laughs> to share everything with them with him with the holy spirit so the holy spirit wants to represent god because he's the voice for god he represents what god would say what god would see what god would have his attitude would be he is god's representative so you need to make room for him in your existence and in your life and in your course in miracles work in your study, in your application, in your healing process, to let him help you. You don't have to be alone, you don't have to do this all by yourself, you don't have to figure it all out with your own intellect. You, you have to uh, put aside your separateness, your trusting in your own strength, your I'm so great at this, I'm going to do it all by myself, and allow him to do some stuff for you. And that means literally inviting him in, having a little willingness is an invitation to the Holy Spirit. But if he's standing, if you're, if you're saying, okay, I surrender, I give up all my control, I let go, and I allow God, please come help me. But then you're sort of opening the door but you're still blocking the doorway <laughs> and the Holy Spirit's there kind of outside on the on the sidewalk and he's like can I come in <laughs> knock knock but you're not really um, welcoming you have to be welcoming you have to be like not only willing to have him help you you've got to literally want and joyfully warmly desire that he join with you and come into you and come into your house you've got to get him over the threshold into your body into your feelings into your mind in your thoughts you've got to be willing to be able to be kind of a medium or a channel for him he wants to speak through your mouth he wants to touch people with your hands he wants to guide you as to what to eat and where to go and what to do specifically and to help you and to literally heal you on your behalf to do stuff to you this can be a scary thing if you've got an authority problem that you if you're not willing to really really trust that he has authority and you're willing to trust it and put aside your fear and let go and let him invite him to come into you to operate on you and to change you to heal you to affect you to be an effect of God then he's not going to trespass and he's not going to invade your freedom because you're basically saying I, I'm not comfortable with you being in me I don't want you you're not welcome here you're not welcome in my altar so it takes development of trust and willingness to surrender control and sometimes maybe to be so incredibly upset and stressed and life is falling to pieces that, that it's like gets so bad that, that that's like your only last resort is to plead for help and um, to finally not just ask for help but be willing to receive it 
is it, you can ask for help in a very strong way and say, I, I beg you, please, that isn't going to make it happen because you actually need to be open to receive and you have to be willing to let that authority and that power come into you and through you. So when you have an authority problem, you generally will reject the Holy Spirit's help and you'll be trying to do everything by yourself and feeling alone and you won't be receiving any guidance that's very very helpful and you won't be able to receive the gifts of God. God is trying to give you and bestow upon you the abundance of Christ, all kinds of powers including miracles, and the ability to raise the dead and heal the sick and help other people to be healed by him is going to require you to put aside the efforts on your part to do it all by yourself because you are going to have to acknowledge he is the cause of you and he has the power to cause you and to correct you and if you're not okay with being influenced by a supernatural power that is bigger than yourself you're not going to allow it. You're going to be scared. And that fear is going to say, no, don't come near me. <laughs> I don't want this. So you have to get past the fear. And you do that by trusting. And sometimes even if you are afraid and you want his help, you can acknowledge, okay, I'm afraid, but I'm willing to let, I'm going to try this. I'm going to let you do something. Go ahead and do it. And I'll just trust your word that you're not going to hurt me and then you allow him to come into you you need to get the Holy Spirit in you uh, in order to be fulfilling the function of the light of the world and the healer and the teacher of God you can't do those things you can't become miraculous without him because he is the power he's the mechanism of miracles um, all the power in heaven and earth has been given to him. He's a reflection of God. And so you, you have to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be very intimate and it's going to be very um, sort of vulnerable. And you're going to have to get very honest and be willing to put aside your, your egotism and your selfishness and your defending of yourself and your controlling events and not accepting and not allowing and it's not necessarily easy <laughs> and it takes time but this is all about the undoing of you thinking that you have authority over God and that you're more powerful you can do things without him you can be happy without him and of course says you can't be happy unless you, the son of God is not happy unless he knows he's with God so what you want to get to, which will solve all your problems, is to reclaim your inheritance, become okay with returning to the function and the position that you have in heaven, the role that you have, the relationship dynamic that you have with God, being willing to be a child of God, being willing to be defined by him only and that means if God is the only cause of me I can never be caused by anything else if God is the cause of me I'm not caused by the world if God's the cause of me I'm not caused by the body if God's the cause of me death has no power over me I can never die because God is forcing me to live forever against my will it's not really against your will, but it's kind of like because he he has this function of creating you before you existed, let's say, if, this, if that were possible. He did a whole bunch of stuff to guarantee your nature, your, ex your permanence, your immortality before you came along. And so that has been established by him. He has established reality. He's created the kingdom. He's created your brothers so that you're not alone. He created the Holy Spirit and the angels. And now that's his doing. And you get to add to his doing, but you cannot undo his doing or go against his doing. When you try to go against God's will, 
you're going against your own will because you share will with him your will is his will he wills you to be so then you become unwilling and it's your unwillingness to will with God that makes your will become imprisoned and your imprisoned will has a tyrannical rulership that imprisons it this idea of of this false God that has authority over you instead of God having authority over you because you have to be you have to explain somehow that you came from somewhere you that you, that you were caused by something only God has no cause he's he just is <laughs> nothing came before he is absolute he's always been absolute and you however were authored and so you have been authored by something and no matter who it is either you're gonna say that I'm authored by God and I'm only authored by God or you're gonna say I'm authored by this false God this ego God this opposite this vengeful hateful God that wants you dead because you sinned so undoing your problem with authority causes you to resume your position as God's child puts you back in touch with God as your authority and allows you to reclaim your inheritance which includes God's authority his power his will his mind his happiness his peace his love so as you are willing to put aside your little I'm gonna control this little piece of reality you actually gain the power of God again it is now acknowledged as being in you again and it's allowed to extend through you so now you become empowered but you can only be empowered by sharing God's power if you don't share God's power you have no power and you become powerless so when you depend on your own power your own strength your independent this is mine and I made it myself you will be weak and you will be afraid because you don't have a power that you made all power is of God from God and he gave it to you in your creation so you have it so long as you're willing to accept that he puts it there you can use it so long as you are willing to accept that it must be in accord with his will if you don't want to do that you will reject unlimited power in favor of this illusion of limited power and that limited power is not powerful enough to deal with anything and life will just suck and fall apart because you will <laughs> be trying to run the show and you have this tiny little speck of power that you're running this whole universe with <laughs> and you simply can't it does not work because it's not unlimited so we have to reclaim the fact and be willing to accept you can either deny God's power or you can accept it you can either deny he is your father or you can accept it when you're in denial of it it doesn't change any facts at all you're still always God's child it's just a matter of you don't want to be and so you pretend that you're not and you put up barriers and walls to shut him out psychologically which puts you into unconsciousness and makes you die when you remove these walls you obviously can live forever because that's God's will which is why death is a choice you cannot die unless you choose to do so no one dies without their own consent you cannot be hurt unless you hurt yourself sickness is an attempt to prove you can be hurt these are all bullshit because that's not God's will his will forces you to be permanently immortal and that's the truth about you so anything else that you've made up <laughs> I'd sinned, I'm guilty, I'm unworthy, I'm weak, I am sick, I'm dead, is all your fiction that you're trying to tell yourself is true. That you're trying to make this be real. 
to replace his real authority. You're trying to have this be your world, a world where God cannot enter, so that you can say, oh, I, I rule this world and you rule your world and we'll stay separate. Stay in our separate corners. So, snack time. So part of that is letting go of this idea that you have authority over God. If you had authority over God, you would be able to cause God. He would now be affected by you. You would be able to change him against his will. Which means that you're now attacking him unfairly, uncalled for, that he doesn't want against his will. And you're defining what he is for him as if you're his father and now you've usurped the power of God you've gone above his his power to um, do what even he can't do supposedly um, which is the idea of sin so now by believing that you have this authority that you don't have a fictional authority over God the power to cause God you're going to believe that you have sinned and you're sinful and it's real and therefore you get this now this huge cascade of consequences comes from this including the belief that you're guilty and you don't deserve to be forgiven because sin is real and you should suffer and you should die and then you'll go and die and die again and again and again until you're willing to accept God's authority <laughs> and they're having these ego tantrums like little children that don't want to admit that God is our parent we want to be in control and we want to run the show and we want to not need him um, and yet by rejecting him we put ourselves into a position of being very needy because he gave us everything that's real and worth having and it's our inheritance I mean, unlimited giving absolutely totally everything is yours and now you reject that and now you're you're lacking it and now you're in need you're in need because you say I don't need God when obviously if you're in need it's because you need God and so you need to get God back into your life in order to not be needy and have no, have your needs met. God himself will meet all of your needs. <clears throat> His appointed helper, the Holy Spirit, will supply your needs miraculously. He has the power to heal your body and your mind and your feelings there is nothing he cannot do if you will let him if you'll let him be the authority or the representative for god this is where it says i'm willing to let him choose for god for me if i'm willing to let him symbolize that god has authority over me and god can if i will allow it force me to be perfect heal me, correct me, make me be as I still am, as he created, if I will let the Holy Spirit do that for me on His, on God's behalf, then all the consequences of my wrong decisions, my authority problem, my desire to suffer, my neediness, my lack, my weakness, my stress, will disappear and will be undone by him. Um, and that does mean it's not just a matter of going there and sitting and being in peace and sitting on the fence and saying okay now I'm done he has a function he has to do something and he, his function is to be the only therapist the only healer and he is, his function on earth is healing 
and you share his function on earth as the course says so so he literally has been appointed by God to come along and help you you're not alone in your separateness from God you have this almighty powerful helper that is you're supposed to be acknowledging and developing a relationship with and developing trust in and opening up to and sharing everything with making room for becoming a team with and getting into a position where you are operating in the Holy Spirit and he now can use you and work through you and you now extend his function on earth you become a healer those who are healed become instruments of healing and as the course says literally you you share his function on earth your function in heaven is creation and you share the Holy Spirit's function on earth which is healing and communication of healing and the, the only thing that the Holy Spirit communicates is healing so he is supposed to be doing the healing for you he's supposed to be you're supposed to be receiving help and so that means you don't necessarily have to be the one who does all the purifying and all the forgiving and all the undoing and all the figuring out what things were caused by and all this stuff all this analyzing of your situation and trying to tiptoe back to God which is a form of resistance it's it's um, you're supposed to open up to receive help and let the Holy Spirit come into you into your body and, and through your body to other people to receive healing receive love if you just just sit there and let yourself absorb love from God it's very powerful um, tell yourself that you are surrendering and letting go and just receiving try to just receive from God without without having to do or give anything or put on a show or accomplish anything it's it feels odd at first because you're so used to not receiving and it was the it was the cutting off of this of your reception of communication from God the closing of the communication channels that put you into the position you're in now where you're not communicating with God and where you have a breakdown in communication and miracles raise the level of communication which is um, you got to let the Holy Spirit in to you um, trust him to heal you he can heal every form of sickness in the body if you will let him get in your body and do it for you you don't know how to heal the whole the course talks about how you don't even understand what a miracle is even conceptually most people don't even get it you don't understand them you don't do them you don't um, <clears throat> have the power to do them on your own the Holy Spirit is the mechanism of miracles he does the miracles he's the way by which God gives healing miracles blessings through you to your brothers um, so you have to make room for him to be part of the equation the, the Holy Spirit is sort of acting on behalf of God as sort of a surrogate father and, and you got to let him exercise his authority and his power to of course the miracles really should be I mean it's partly theory and it's partly practice and it's doing lessons and applying it to your life and experiencing trials and lessons in your in your everyday life and overcoming them and everything but a, a huge part of it should be if not all of it eventually should be the opening up to spirit and the receiving of help and resuming your position in the mechanism of heaven the machinery of creation that you have a perfect father who defines everything about you and gives you everything and keeps you perfectly healthy and happy forever and then you extend it and you, anything that says otherwise has to go anything that says I do this to you and you do this to me and 
and I've been affected and I'm attacked and I'm attacking and I've sinned and I'm guilty and other people my other brothers are causing me they're not the cause of you either they're they're equal siblings God caused both of you at the same time and so you are not caused by anyone else and you don't cause anyone else you only cause your children that you create in heaven with God so any myth that you have any belief that you have that you are about the effect of this person this person did this to me and they did that to me and the world did this to me and this 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 aspect of the body is doing this to me and the, I'm at the effect of food and air and water and aging and time and space and on anything that is ego I'm not at the effect of the world I see because I'm only at the effect of God so as, as you there's those two pieces to it so they go together like I am caused by God I'm not caused by the world I'm only only what God wants me to be I'm not what the world wants me to be I am only created by God in his image and likeness I'm exactly like him I'm not like anything in the world God gives me all power and makes me powerful. The world does not give me any power and does not make me powerful. It takes my power away. I can only be what God wants me to be. I cannot be what the world wants me to be. I, what I am is given to me by God. I didn't put it there myself the world would say what well, I am I get to choose and I've decided it on my own and I've given it to myself and now it's mine and I've <laughs> it's my possession it's my idol and now I worship it as, as these special <laughs> things that I want in the world you don't want anything in the world all you want is God you, the only welcome that you should have is to welcome God and love and everything that's real and created you shouldn't be welcoming <laughs> bullshit uh, a planet of death not that you need to attack it either you should extend God's love to the, to the world but you shouldn't be in love with the world as if it's if it's as if it's a special love a real thing to keep you made it in assuming that you could make something on par with God but it lacks and it's limited because you made it by limiting yourself and so it cannot be whole and it cannot be eternal and it cannot have eternal life it cannot be immortal that's why everything in the world will perish everything changes because it can be changed it's illusions illusions are illusions because they can be changed and they can easily be changed and miracles can change them easily you could uh, by becoming miraculous change a mountain into a molehill <laughs> a literal mountain um, you could move the moon with your mind your mind has great power this power never switches off because it's the power of God and it's the power that he put there but you're not if you're not in touch with it you're not using it because you're afraid of the power of the mind because you're afraid of God's authority so the ego in your egotism you actually are afraid that God having authority over you means he controls you because the ego is about control and so it thinks my false god parent is a controlling domineering forceful vengeful attacking parent that is fickle and unloving and so you're afraid that god's going to be that way that by accepting his authority you're going to have to be controlled you will only be able to do what he forces you to do you're uh, going to lose your freedom and you're going to be like a prisoner and a slave and you're not going to be able to choose anything and you're not going to be able to um, uh, do what you want because you're going to be forced into this position of having to do only what he wills 
But the thing is, in truth, you want to do what God wills, and you want to will, sorry, in accord with His will, like His will, because it brings you joy, and He's what He wills is what is wonderful, and so you want to will like God and with God. That's not imprisonment. It's it's open and it's free and it's joyful. But the ego interprets it as you're going to take all my power away. You're going to make me a slave to you. You're going to have control over me. I don't want to give up my power. I don't want to make room for God. I'm going to lose myself. I'm going to lose my identity. I'm going to be dead if I get near God. He doesn't want me. He abandoned me. This this all comes around. All the children of God that think that they have an authority problem believe that they've been abandoned by God. God doesn't want them. God hates them. God is their enemy. God finds them unworthy. They can never go home because they're unforgivable. They've sinned and it's permanent and it cannot be reversed. Every child of God that is a separated one has constant anxiety and depression and fear and a sense that you don't really exist and worry that you're going to die because God is missing. Every form of sickness in the world is a symptom of the absence of God. Every question everyone has is the rejection of the answer. Every problem that occurs in the world is a symptom of trying not to be with God. It causes there to be problems and needs and difficulties. <laughs> A lack of ease, a lack of perfection, a lack of order, it just goes into chaos because there's no divine order to it. Um, so if you want your life to go well, you have to get on board with the God machine. You have to be part of the, the kingdom again to reclaim your position in the kingdom. To to own up to the fact that you are what God created you to be. You're still as God created you. You're still Christ. You're still immortal. You're still holy, innocent, pure, perfect, loving, kind, gentle, powerful, fearless, deathless, ageless, timeless, spaceless, unlimited. Everything that is that God decided you are, it's your job to accept it again instead of rejecting it, instead of having issues with it, authority problems with it, recognizing that it's your salvation, that you act, it's actually something you want, and being willing, fully willing, freely willing. No one comes, everyone comes to the atonement through free will. You have to choose it. Heaven is a choice I must make. You, you're invited to come back home you're not god is not reaching out and saying get back home you motherfucker what the hell are you doing you little rascal fuck you bastard it's god is loving and kind and gentle and love does not enter where it's not welcome he doesn't control you god does not coerce even god would not go against your will it's so you have to be willing to want to accept the atonement because you recognize it as the truth and as what you want and you're no longer willing to be in denial or to have the pain and suffering that comes from rejecting his authority and rejecting your own and by having an authority problem you must be believing that you don't have any creations because you've rejected them and have forgotten about them. So accepting the atonement, which is forgiveness, is just about I'm going to stop fighting against God's authority. I'm going to stop trying to reinvent myself. I'm going to let go of all the definitions of myself that I came up with. I'm going to stop believing that I'm a body. I'm going to let go of all sense of bodily identity and limitation. I'm going to see myself as unlimited beyond space and time. I'm going to reclaim my immortality and my holiness and my power, which I'm given by God. I'm going to awaken my 
ability to see, by my willingness to see reality, regaining vision, and therefore recognize correctly what the truth, what God's truth really is, instead of being confused about this false God truth that I think is really the truth, that it isn't, I made up, and accepting, just accepting it. It's like God has given you perfection, and He's in the atonement, He's given you here as a reminder of what's true and and why it's true and what's perfect already and all you got to do is say okay I accept it and and claim it as your own allow it to be the truth have no problems with it see if you have any ego belief at all anything at all and I believe in my body I believe in sickness death whatever attack fear those are beliefs against the recognition of the atonement they are beliefs that are causing you not to accept the truth they are substituting for the truth by saying something else is true something other than God's truth is true for me and I value it and I want it because I don't want God's authority and so accepting the atonement requires the letting go of all those beliefs, all those values, all those idols, all the things that you made up, all the things you invented, all the lies, to, to be willing to surrender and just accept. It's like God, it's like an off-the-shelf gift. God has, has prefabricated and made this perfect you that's sitting on a shelf where you've left it you put it on a shelf and left it there and went off to try to make something else and all you've got to now do is say I am willing to accept the self that God created me to be I'm gonna just take this this pre-made model that is on the shelf and I'm just gonna take it off the shelf and this is the one I'm gonna be okay with and I'm gonna accept this and claim this as my own and reclaim my identity and align with it and be whatever it says I should be like with no objections and and that's accepting the truth it's accepting that you are the self that God created you're still exactly perfectly precisely as he created you and you haven't changed nothing's been affected you haven't been altered, you haven't been harmed, you haven't been damaged, you haven't turned into an evil monster, you haven't become anything else. Nothing has occurred to change from this, if we can say, the day that you were created in heaven. You've been a constant light of perfection and not one single thing that you've dreamed, imagined, believed, lied about, been in denial about, has had the slightest effect on that whatsoever, it is still perfect shining light, unblemished, unaffected by the separation. The kingdom of God cannot be assailed. Nothing real can be threatened. You are still as God created you. And all you've got to do is accept that, that self that God created you to be and want nothing else. So Jesus says, as he's reminding me in the course, he talks about how uh, he, everything that he has, he has in, inherited from God. Everything that he has was given to him by God. And he has nothing else. He doesn't want anything else because it's perfect already. He doesn't need anything else. This is not lacking. He doesn't have to go add extra functions and extra abilities because he's unlimited powerful Christ being so you can't improve upon a perfect creation of God As Jesus says you cannot underestimate you can never overestimate your brother's worth it is infinite so <laughs> that was fun infinite so um you just have to get back in touch with that that specification of what you are and want only what 
comes from God and that entails actually total dependence on God God created his souls by knowing them he created them in order to depend on them they are symbiotic in their relationship they completely depend on each other God God didn't create things that he couldn't depend on that are flaky and might go wrong he created his children to be dependable to be constantly the same to be reliable to be unchangeable and so you have a total dependency on God and that means in this world we're supposed to get to where we are depending on God for everything in order to resume that that role that to be in that proper position of um, uh, everything that I have comes from God I am what I am because of him and I am healed by him alone and he can undo everything that I've made to fuck things up and there's not one single problem that I've manufactured not one sickness not one suffering that he doesn't have the power to undo if I will let him and this letting him is, is a huge deal for people as it's all about surrendering ego and letting go and of control and, and making room for a higher power a supernatural spirit being the Holy Spirit a supernatural power beyond your body to, to be okay with it and not afraid of it to allow it to come and, and do stuff to you with your will not against your will and to trust it because if, as we do that we're developing miracle working ability you you be a miracle worker by taking on this function and this role where God is the cause of you you are the host to him you host his power and you extend and co-create his with his power and his will and give it to others so it's like God's up here he created all of his children and, his, and your brothers and then they share everything with each other um, how's it go miracles are a universal blessing from God through me to all my brothers which means God is the miracle worker through the mechanism of the Holy Spirit you don't do miracles the course is very clear about this it's the power of God acknowledging that all power is of God is to gain all power you are host to God's power he all power is of him from him he's he's holding it there inside you but you get to use it with him through extension love goes out on its own because of what it is but you are needed that it can begin the power of God can operate to do anything not one single thing you can think of that it cannot do no, it doesn't matter how radical how big no order of difficulty in miracles moving a fucking universe and So God is the power that heals the sick and raises the dead through you as you are willing to extend and share the Holy Spirit's function of healing by having allowed him to heal you so that you're now healed and, and you're now a light and a doorway and the light of the world so he can extend through you and the power of God can move through you to extend to your brothers to shine into their minds which extends your healing to them and heals them and raises the dead and heals the sick and the blind and whatever else and moves mountains and creates worlds <clears throat> so miracle working is reacquired by putting aside the authority problem 
because you have to get to where you're willing to have the Holy Spirit in you and you've got to be able to um, depend on God and you've got to be able to have made room for him and trust him and that means sort of getting out the way and years ago when I first started trying to be miraculous and had a lot of ego um, I would try to use the ego's version of power. I would try to be forceful and say forceful things. I would even get angry. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of there, you you Satan devil, you. I command you to leave in Jesus' name and all this kind of stuff to try to try to force it to go. But it was coming from me and it was coming from my separate power which was limited and because it was limited the more that I forced the more I separated from love and the more it became angry and it was ridiculous and it didn't do anything <laughs> it was a total fail but you kind of learn by your failures and I so I gradually was learning that that's not how you perform miracles it, it, it's, it requires you to not be the source of the miracle power you so and so that opened me up more gradually over time to trusting holy spirit to now heal through me and allowing his power to be the power he has a power that, that i felt one time you know that i was doing a healing on my wife's arm she had a pain in her hand and, and I was just letting him go through me and extending through my hands and having thoughts of, of relaxing and stepping aside and just letting him, the course is let, let him be the one that does the therapy. Um, the, 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 heal, the healer or the therapist lets healing be, but that doesn't mean you don't do anything because you have a function. You have to be part of this machinery. You are an extender, you're a relay station. And so you've got to, you have to be loving and you have to be miraculous as well in order for his miraculousness to move through you uninterrupted. And so that's why you need to be miracle minded um, and have a healed mind so that it doesn't obstruct his power. And then love will extend through you as a miracle on its own under Christ's control, not voluntarily selected, um, because you're allowing the Holy Spirit to extend the power. So now God is the miracles are a blessing from God through you, uninterrupted by you but dependent upon and requiring your miracle mindedness to your brothers and heals them and shares with them and raises the communication and supplies a lack and benefits the giver and the receiver and so on. This is only possible by undoing the authority problem because all that power, there's this one time with my wife in her hand and doing this healing and all of a sudden I feel, and this is the only time I felt it so far, this immense power and I don't mean like an energy flowing it was just this this presence this seeming presence that was so intense and so seemingly sort of fixed in position almost like it was like immobile it was just sort of rigid and um, it had such force it was as if the force was like extremely powerful and it was if anything would have been moved by it, it would have had to move because it was so strong it was such a strength this is the power of the Holy Spirit this is God's power and it healed her arm to the extent that she completely forgot that she even had complained about having a pain and she was like it had wiped from her mind and she didn't even remember that she'd asked me to help her with it because it was completely healed by that ex extraordinary power. I've only felt that one time and I'm still trying to get that back again. But um, it's the Holy Spirit has that power. It's, it's like nothing of this world. It is extremely strong. Uh, it's, it's like like if you could have the power of 10,000 trains 
focused in one point. <laughs> so strong and certain that nothing can withstand it. Nothing can move a planet. It's so, so strong. That's the strength. Unlimited strength. Unlimited power. Like an absolute force. That's what the Holy Spirit has, and He can use that to do anything through you. But it does, it's going to require us to become more minded and, and get out the way and resume our function in the machinery. We need to be willing that God is our author, and that we need to let go of all this, all the ways that we try to have authority over Him. Belief in sin, belief in guilt, all the ways that we don't want to accept the truth defining other truths as true, valuing things that aren't valuable, wanting things that God doesn't will. Getting ourselves lined up with God's will is what makes us have miraculous supernatural power. And the power isn't of us, but we share it and we have it and we can use it um, with the Holy Spirit. And this is sort of missing somewhat in the Course of Miracles community. Because of the presence of the ego in all of our minds, we're, we're very resistant to this, we're very afraid of it, we want to stay in control, and so we're kind of a bit blind to it. We've sort of, we sort of prefer to stay in this realm of what can I control, what can I figure out, what lessons can I do by myself, how can I intellectualize the concepts, and all this sort of low-level self-directed stuff that doesn't really entail any trust, faith, receiving, openness, uh, surrender, letting go of, of trying to have your own power, trying to make things be the way you want them to be, being, you got to be willing to allow things and, and to let there be a power that's in you that isn't of you. What the Holy Spirit enables you to do is clearly not of this world. It is extremely it, miracles break all the laws of space-time. That's why Jesus could walk on water and multiply food and all kinds of stuff because <laughs> he has a power in him. The power is of God. God is the one who heals the sick and raises the dead through the Holy Spirit in you, through you, for you, which simultaneously lifts you and the other person, the giver and the receiver, are both benefited. You're both healed along with your brother, Forgiveness is not real unless it's brought a healing to your brother and yourself. You're both lifted up by the extension of love that comes through you from the source of love. All love is of God. He's the, he is the light in which you see. It's like you can't exist without him. You can't do shit without him. You cannot be happy without him. You have no power without him. You don't have a life without him. You don't exist without him. You don't have a self without him. You don't have any will without him. You are totally dependent on God at all times. And when you pretend that you're not, you reject everything that he gives you, which is everything, and become bereft and empty and lacking and weak. And you have nothing. Either you, either you accept God, the inheritance that God has given you, which is all-powerful, almighty, supernatural, miraculous, loving, amazing, creative, or you end up with empty hands and you have nothing. And you pretend that you have things that you don't have, and you pretend that they're valuable and that you want them. And deep down you don't want them. You cannot want anything that God didn't create. It's all made up value and meaning. I, this is really valuable, important. Here's a laptop and it's, wow, it's, it's special and it's valuable and it's got a price tag and it's, it's made by a special company and wow, we're gonna worship the idols. It doesn't even exist in reality. God didn't create this. So you, you have to let it go. <laughs> You have to not be attached to stuff. You have to like recognize that this is just a dream here. This was this was this was our attempt to overthrow the authority of God. To say I don't want God to be my father. 
slash mother slash creator being. So reclaiming or undoing the authority problem is to reclaim your true authority and to put your mind under the authority of your spirit, your soul. This is what Jesus says. This is the only way to truly change your mind is when you when you take your mind and this is the separation and down here is the ego and this is heaven where, where you take your mind and you make it be a host to God instead of hostage to the ego. You, you reconnect it to spirit instead of to the ego and you accept God as the cause of you instead of the ego. Um, and by doing that, that's you change thought systems. You're going from the whole ego thought system, stepping outside of it and going back into the thought system of God, which is heaven. Creation is his mind. It's a system of thought. You are one of God's thoughts. And heaven is the sum of all God's thoughts in number infinite. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to wrap up here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> that changes your mind because you're truly choosing a true alternative. You're choosing heaven's, heaven's thought system instead of the ego's. Doing that places your mind back under the authority of your soul, under Christ control, which See, the whole problem is it's not really, the separation is not about you inventing yourself, it's about you trying not to be yourself. And it's, it's, it's not to do with the soul either, because the soul never leaves the sight of God. The soul is perfect. The spirit is in a state of grace forever. It's always perfect, and it never changes. But it's hidden by the fact that a part of the mind, which isn't the soul, free, free will is part of the mind, not the soul, Part of the mind tried to split off and believe something that wasn't true. In other words, it tried to reject the soul that uses the mind as a medium for creation. And so a piece of the mind said, I'm, not, I'm going to stop receiving signals from the soul. I'm going to shut down the, the communication channel and I'm going to go off and be by myself. And so as your mind returns to dependence on God, it is returning itself to being fully operated by the soul, fully willing to only do in accord with God's will, and therefore to be uh, a tool, just, just a, a tool that doesn't have an opinion of its own, that is just being used by spirit to create in accord with God's will instead of it being sort of cut off and separated from the soul and trying to trying to in, say that it has its own input and, and create it creates its own input system the soul is the input to the mind and the soul uh, uses the mind as the, as the the medium for creative expression so when the mind is saying, I don't want to be receiving signals from the soul, I want to just have my own beliefs, it's the mind that actually becomes egotistical and goes into the separation idea. So the mind has to be corrected and return to willingness to be fully dependent on the soul, again, on the on Christ mind, on God. Um, so this, the undoing of the authority problem is the mind getting healed, and being restored to its proper function and use only as the soul decides to use it and not how it makes up its own desires and its own fake needs and its own pretend uh, playing at God. <laughs> and, then the, and then the mind is now being correctly used, it just is fulfilling its proper function as a creative medium through which the soul can create instead of miscreate uh, and that now it requires of course requires the 
authority problem to come to an end and requires you to accept God's authority which doesn't mean you're some kind of slave and doesn't mean he's gonna hurt you and it doesn't mean he's controlling you um, but he is the source of you he is the cause of you and he is your father and you will always be a child of God you will not be able to to assume his function ever you have to be okay with being a child of God um, accepting that you are a son of God um, otherwise you get notions of being more than you are which is going into authority problem that's where it all began so there is a section in the course called judgment and the authority problem that talks about this quite a bit I did pull up some some quotes that I might take a quick peek at just to finish off here um, the issue of authority is really a question of authorship uh, when an individual has an authority problem it's always because he, he he believes he is the author of himself souls were given their own true authorship meaning that you as an individual had the ability to author to create um, but you prefer to remain anonymous when you chose to separate from your author um, so by rejecting God as the author of you it kind of made you anonymous like you didn't have any identity any definition of what you are and that paved the way for you to fill the void with your made-up definition of what you are um, and it also says here about how the word authority has been one of the most fearful symbols ever since um, And by rejecting your, your that you were authored by God, it puts you in a position, uh, has left them in a position where it sounds meaningful to consider the possibility that they must have created themselves. Because if God's not your author and your creator, then apparently you must have created yourself. Um, this, the, this, and, but then that leads to the fact that if you believe that you haven't been authored by God, maybe you don't exist the dispute over authorship has left such uncertainty in the minds of man that some people have gone so far as to doubt whether they were ever created at all um, so it makes you think you don't exist by rejecting God because you are attempting not to have been created that leads to death if you don't want to die you have to accept God that doesn't mean God's gonna kill you but it does mean if you reject God who is the only way to live <clears throat> and the only source of your existence you are rejecting your own eternal life and forcing yourself into an illusion of suffering and death and the only way to overcome that illusion of suffering and death is to undo the authority problem and accept that God is your father uh, it goes into it in various ways there but um so there we go this is, we have big issues with authority and then when you get issues with authority of God you'll start having issues with authority with other people and you won't want to accept other people it seems like other people have authority over you they cause you they sin against you they attack you and now you've got this this challenge you're having to rise up against your enemies and have authority over them and try to shut them down and put them down and get rid of them murderously to assert your authority it's a fake authority because God's authority does not force and coerce and, and uh, demand and it's not tyrannical it's uh, so it comes down to as Jesus says somewhere uh, you are either 
a host to God or you are a hostage to the ego so you get to decide who am I going to have in me who who am I going to host am I going to am I going to accept that I am put here by God and I'm made by God and I cannot define myself and so I just accept that God is in me and I am what he wants me to be or I'm going to pretend God's not in me and replace it with oh, a bunch of shit and a pile of crap and all kinds of bullshit that I'm trying to use to make up a sense of what I am and who I am, this false self, this egotism, this ego self, this idea of what you are not, this attempt not to exist, and this, the ego is an attempt not to have a self. And its undoing is the undoing of nothing, because you're just going to reclaim the self that God defined and God created. I am still as God created me, and not one single thing has happened in all the history of space and time, even slightly, to change me in any way. I am still as God created me. I am perfect. I'm holy, I am divine, I am flawless, I am specifically exactly what God wants me to be. He's therefore perfectly happy with me. He is delighted that he has created me to be the way he wants me to be. And I'm okay with it. <laughs> I have no problem with it. I am, it's, it's such a gift that I am happy and glad and grateful to thank God for having created me to be the way he wants me to be. To acknowledge that God finds me worthy. To acknowledge that I am what he wants, that I, my true nature has already been decided by him as to what he wants me to be like and so just by being me I am acceptable and I am perfect and lovable and God loves you right now for who you really are knowing who you are and trusting you and you have this symbiotic dependency on him you both exist together forever and you cannot be separated and you have immortality because of this because he permanently expresses you he permanently holds you suspended in his mind like a star and you can never be moved by anything because it's an absolute power that holds you in God's mind forever. You are unaffected by dreaming. <sighs> I think I'm going to wind up there because this is rather long as per usual. And I'll talk to you some other time. Hope you're doing well. Love to you and God bless. Bye bye.